Hi, I'm Lee Sam Miller with W. Cushing & Company, and welcome to Third Thursdays with Lee Sam. Well, this is our December Third Thursday, and it is the end of the year, so happy 2021. It's wonderful, and I thank Rug Hooking Magazine for this opportunity. And I want to ask each of you who watch the videos what you'd like to see for 2022. We are going to continue Third Thursdays with Lee Sam, so email us at orders at wcushing.com and let us know what you'd like for topics for 2022. And also be sure that you have the latest rug hooking magazine with the snow geese on it, hooked by Helen Moore. So, last month's video um, about hooking back backgrounds, when to use higgly piggly, when to use puzzle pieces, well, a lot of you had questions on how do you do them, how do you hook them, how do you draw them. So the first part of this video, we're going to go over Higgly Piggly and Puzzle Pieces, drawing them. And then we're going to talk about a four-letter word, snow. So, first things first, let's talk about Higgly Piggly. Now, Higgly Piggly is where you just don't want a straight line, you need it to arc. So here I have the water and I'm starting my skyline and I've done a higgly piggly. A higgly piggly line goes just like that because we, it, yes, we have a little bit of a straight line, but we want it to have some motion. So this would be a higgly piggly line. And when you go and you hook a higgly piggly line, the way that you hook it, and this is how I choose my sky, we have it all in a pile right over here. So when I go to hook it, I am going to hook it in such a way that it's not straight, but it meanders. So when you want to do that, you start, and you, we have the, the line drawn in, and I'm going to hook this, but again, not straight. It has curves, it goes up, it goes down. It is a higgly-piggly. And when you do a higgly piggly, that is how you are supposed to do that. You go up, you go down, you go around. And if you use a texture, dyed wool, it looks fantastic. A texture also works. Uh, somebody had asked from last uh, month's video, does one work better with textured or dyed? No. Textured and dyed work for both of these techniques. It's just the look that you want to achieve. So here I've started the Higgly Piggly. Here you can see how it shows the gradation in the dyed wool, and that allows you to look at things a little differently. Now, I can come in for my next row, and yes, this is a much, much uh, thinner cut, but I'm gonna hook it the same size that I hooked the first row and you can tuck into a higgly piggly many different size cuts to get highlights, uh, to get a little bit of depth if you need it. So in the higgly piggly, I'm using a four and a six. So you can see that. Now I'm gonna come back in again with another color in the higgly piggly. And with that, you'll be able to achieve a look, a layered look of the sky, but not in a straight line. And when you do that, you have a nice even, nice even look, but not in straight lines. So, Here's the higgly piggly. The more that you put in, the more it would press up. This is just a little quick and dirty, but you can see the line, the first line sets the tone and then you can follow it. If I wanted a pink sky, I would use this and then you fill in. Now, the next one was puzzle pieces. Well, my clouds provide the perfect puzzle piece. These are the puzzle pieces, as you can see. And you, if you wanted to draw a puzzle piece in, you literally draw them in like that. This is how you draw in a puzzle piece. To hook with a puzzle piece, 
it is outline and fill. So as you can see, you're gonna, you can start anywhere after you draw your puzzle pieces. You do not have to use just one texture or one dyed wool. You can create a swatch bag, and a swatch bag is a pile of the same value or similar values in blues, light blues, just say for the sky or whatever you're working on. And then you pull from the pile and you outline the puzzle shape. And here is what a swatch bag looks like. This is a swatch bag. As I go along, I'm gonna pull different wools from it. Some I may not use, some may work, but I have a entire palette of color right here, and I'm just gonna use it and hook from it. It also allows you to see the different tones and values. So after I outline, I can fill, and I'm going to fill it in. And by filling it in, that creates the motion. And you don't have to outline in one color and fill in another. You just outline and then hook around. And in the end, I'm only gonna hook one little section of this so we can move on to the four letter word, but it's just so you get the general idea. So now I've hooked that one little puzzle piece, just like that, and you can see that the motion is there. And then if I wanted to, and I wanted to start another puzzle piece and start another section, just say down here, I can. And I'm gonna take another color so you can see. I'm gonna take Yankee Pinstripe, and I'm using Cloud Cover and they're just a value or so off, and I can start outlining. Now I can outline the whole piece if I so choose, or pieces of it, and then come back and fill in. So if I come back and fill in, I'm just gonna come right back in. I'm gonna fill in. And it's a uniform look when you get done. Your eye does not rest on any one piece. And by doing that, you create a blue sky, just like that. So there's the two puzzle pieces where they've met. You can continue that along. You can take each section of this cloud and hook it as a puzzle piece in your cloud cover colors and move on from there. It allows you not to pack we're gonna make a New Year's resolution, my packers, not to pack, and then you can have an overall look. And I'm gonna move this over a tad so you can see what the puzzle piece is. And remind, just a reminder, this isn't pressed or anything yet. This is puzzle pieces, as you can see, larger puzzle pieces hooked. Here I've used the cloud, I've outlined it, and then hook these in in puzzle pieces. So, and here's a puzzle piece starting right down here, and here's a little higgly-piggly line. So it creates an overall look. It goes a lot quicker, you don't pack, and at the end, you have just a beautiful overall background or look. So just to repeat, higgly-piggly puzzle pieces. And hopefully that answers your questions on those. So now we're going to go to the four letter word snow. And snow does not have to always be white. So I'm going to show you a few examples of different snows and then show you wools that correspond to it. This is um, Cozy Cabin. It was a free pattern insert two years ago in the January, February Rug Hooking Magazine, a bigger version of it. And what I used for snow is I sculpted. It is not Waldeboro. I just pulled a gray wool very high and sculpted it so it sat on the house. Sculpting the snow works very well because you can lay it onto the roof. Now, with the other snow, when you have a building, a house, a church, you see this little gray line that I've put in right in here that little gray line makes the house, it's crucial, it makes the house sink into the snow. 
And then I've used three colors, one, two, and three. And I treated it like icing. As you can see, I did it very irregular. And then I filled the shape in. Then I made another shape and then a third shape. That created the layers of snow. So again, sink the house into the snow bank. You need this light gray line. I sculpted the snow here and I used three colors to create the snow mounds. So that's one way to do the snow. A second way to do the snow, and this is uh, Welcome Home, I used a cloud cover it's hooked in puzzle pieces, and then I added Arctic rays. And I added the Arctic rays to add the glistening of snow without having to add snow to each tree. Um, it appears you add this after you steam your rug because it will burn, uh, but it adds a glimmer, a shine without going overboard. And to delineate the snow from here to here, I went with a brighter color and then a grayer color. Another way to do your snow. Now, snow does not always have to be white. It can have a blue tint, it can have a pink tint. In this case, in Jolly, this is Jolly Old Saint Nick. In here, we've used gray and blue gray in a dyed piece and we've put that in. The blue is in here first around the face, the gray is put in, and then this is filled in with um, our dyed wool gull, G-U-L-L. -L. And this is more of our Bitterford pool and I'll show you these in a little bit. But if you notice in here, the lines are put in first in a blue and especially on his cuff and then they're filled in. This does equate, while it's a beard and his fur, it equates now to the snow. And this is a good way to try your snow colors before you move to snow on the chimney. So if you notice, it's that same gray, used a darker outline so you really see the layer, like icing, of the snow, and then it is just filled in. So it worked here, it worked here. Well, we know it's gonna work down the bottom where Santa's sleigh is on the snow. So in here, this is a Higgly Piggly. If you notice, the Higgly Piggly lines are all put in in gray, they're put in in blue, uh, they're put in unevenly, just like that, in layers. The lines are there. Then it is filled in with the gull, and it's filled in almost in puzzle pieces. So this is where Higgly Piggly works and then the puzzle piece that's left between the two lines is filled in. And if you notice, you can see the layers of snow. So it was tested right up into here, but accentuated into the snow. This is a good example of you can try it up into here, you like it, then you really over do your lines and your colors a little deeper and it works for your snow. And the blue and the blue gray work because this is gull which does have a tan component to it. And the tan component plays very well. Does not always have to be bright white for snow. The next one, all right. So here is Christmas in the Valley. Here, the, these buildings are so small, it's a gray texture that is cut into a three cut, and it's just hooked, but it's hooked directionally as it would lay on the roof. And it's hooked directionally. The direction of hooking accents the snow. Of course, we have the snow here. Now, here is an interesting thing to put snow on a tree, and we're gonna go over how to hook snow on a tree in January, because I'm sure we'll still have snow. So, here we go. So with this, this is a dyed piece of wool, and if you notice, it's layered. This is mainly white or cream. Here's cream, but the green comes in. 
Then we have our cream again. So the green is actually, I actually hooked the green in first. This is hooked in first. So I created my layers. Then I came in and put the snow on the boughs. And it's hooked down because the snow would weigh down. In this case, you can see the lines a little bit clearer. Here's the top with the snow, but the green was put in first, almost like little puzzle pieces, then puzzle pieces of snow underneath. Again, this is how this was achieved. So this is snow. And this is one way to do snow on a tree. Now, for those that want to really just hook snow and have it look like snow, but not fuss with it, this is our snow dyed wool and it has the blue and the white and it's just simply cut and hooked. But by adding gray, when you add gray as an outline, you create that icing look and the layer of snow. Gray in this case works as the outline and to add definition. And here's another case of just using a plain white wool and some plain gray wool on a simple snowman. And by adding it in and cradling it down the bottom, you have created the snowman. Two colors, just simply highlighted. And even the tree just has simple snow on the boughs and the green tree. Very nice, very effective. And some people are afraid of the snow. They're afraid to hook the snow. Start with the two colors, move along, and you'll be great with it. You can also use just pl plain blue. And we've looked at um, Woodland Santa before, but we're just gonna focus down here. And by using two textures and doing the pinwheel, it creates the effect of snow easily. And by creating that effect of snow easily, it looks like it's snowing, it looks nice, and it's just done in two textures, uh, Yankee Pinstripe and Cloud Cover. And then if you want to add some spark and you want to add something, you can add in the Arctic rays into the tree. So that is, and you can, they're barely catching the light here, but there are some Arctic rays added in. The last snow is a pink snow. And this happened to be Joan Moshimer's favorite dye formula for snow. It's called Mother of Pearl. And she loved Mother of Pearl to layer snow in. And this is Mother of Pearl. And it's, I layered it in with all light colors. I took a huge bag of light colors and I worked it in a swatch bag with Mother of Pearl. I hooked it in all different directions. I echoed my pine cone to look like my pine cone was on a snow bank. And yes, I did use a pink tone because I have the pink in the pine cone. And here is a good example of the Arctic rays right there and right in here. I layered that in. And with Mother of Pearl, while it looks very pastel, it allows you to add pastel colors in. So I had all light colors, uh, mother of pearl, and echoed, puzzle pieced, and at the end, the pine cone was sitting in a snow bank. So let's go over some options that we have for snow. And since the pink is on top, we'll start with that. This is our mother of pearl. This is what it looks like before you hook it. And if you want this look and this soft look, then you pick up the colors that are in the wool, whether it's mother of pearl or something you have in your stash. You pick up the blue, the pink, and the pale, pale yellow, and you add them in to create your layers of snow. This is um, fall hydrangea, and a lot of people would stay away from this, but you have your definition of snow here. Here's your blue and white. Here's a line to your next layer. And you can use bolder colors if you choose. And this is one way to achieve a look of snow, but a little bit bolder colors. Frosty is always a favorite. 
uh, because it's what we think of snow, it's what we think of ice. You have all the colors, you don't have to dissect it. If you want to try hooking snow, you would hook the snow with Lee Sand Sky. This is, you know, uh, Lee Sand Sky. You could do your layers in this color and then just hook with this to get a feel if you've never hooked snow before. The two colors would go very, very well together. So let's move, and we had talked about Bitterford Pool. Bitterford Pool is always a dark line, but when you pair it with something uh, such as Frosty, then that allows you to add layers. That allows you to add layers to your snow. And you like to hook your snow in layers like icing. So let's move to our textures. This is Yankee Pinstripe. Yankee Pinstripe allows that blue like you would get from Frosty, but it's in a texture. I am using it in my sky. Uh, I would use it in my snow. This is also another great snow. It's got your gray and your white. And then we have Barnside Gray, which is a texture. And if you need to create a layer, don't be afraid to go to this depth, which is Country Hound. Country Hound adds another layer. You could use it as we use Bitterford Pool. Why? Because it has cream and blue in it and would pick up these colors. So for embellishing, or, and we have two more, we have a few more textures in the bag here. Here we have Dune, which is new. And Dune is more taupey. So if you wanted to, the look of gull, but not the dyed wool, then you can achieve that that way. Here is Main Sky, which does provide a little bit of a difference. A little bit more white if you want your snow to be more white. So then we're gonna add some sparkle. We can add sparkle with a metallic yarn. You would hook it just like a noodle. You can always cheat and hook your snow in velvet. It lays just like snow on a tree. It lays just like snow on a house. And all you have to do is hook it. Other textures that you may want if you want a creamier snow. Uh, if you'd like something a little creamier or a little grayer, here's another snow and ice. Now, the last thing that we have is our pearl metallic. And our pearl metallic adds a lot of shine. And as you can see, you could use it with your snow, the velvet, or you could use it with main sky and add that shine like the sun is shining or it's a little bit icy. And these we've gone over before and I will go over again when we hook our um, trees with snow. So here is the Arctic rays. They are very thin. They're added at the end. They don't show as much color as you would think because they're on this card. They're very light. If you want to see what it will look like, you can just see all the glitter coming up. And there you are. And don't be afraid to use the aqua. Everybody goes to the silver and the white. But if you're using a blue or you're using main sky or frosty, this does add the glitter that you would like. Because remember, it is the season of glitter and glisten. So there you are. There is different ways to do it. Uh, in January, we'll hook different, uh, we'll hook a pine tree. I'll have a pine tree hooked and we'll put some snow on. The pine trees do not have to be all green. They can be white, they can be red, it doesn't matter. But I hope that each of you have a wonderful holiday season and Tucker wants to wish everybody a happy holiday season as well. He says, Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Enjoy your time, be safe, and we'll see everybody in 2022. Thank you for all your support.